I'm going to be talking about uh, Eclipse Memory Analyzer tool. I'm uh, Lakshman from Little Labs. Uh, we'll basically cover uh, what is memory analysis, why do we need to use the tool, right? And then uh, go through some uh, definitions of uh, what what is uh, important and relevant in terms of uh, uh, memory analysis. And uh, we'll see a small couple of small examples of very obvious memory leaks and see how they manifest in uh, the mat. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll just go through some basic functionality of mat. Okay. Uh, people are expected to know basic Android app development and basic uh, understanding of what is heap and uh, what is garbage collection. Uh, yeah, if you have, uh, if you have already used mat quite well and all, you probably will not gain much from this uh, uh, session. You can stay back to help me answer any questions though. <coughs> now we'll slip into a small commercial break. Uh, just wanted to uh, pitch my uh, our company. Uh, we do, uh, we develop a uh, tool for, a tool that helps Android developers and testers understand their application better and gives them uh, inputs, uh, in deeper insights into their application to improve the quality of theirs. So you, there is a booth set up in the uh, floor below. You can go and check a live demo of it. Okay, that's okay. Now onto the main program. <laughs> Why do you need to do memory analysis? Right. Uh, the common reasons are you want to identify leaks uh, and you want to reduce the memory footprint of uh, an app. I must be uh, make joking here, right? Java, Android uses Java, which is managed code. There are no leaks here. Right? I, ho I hope, I mean, uh, like everybody understands what uh, the kind of leaks that we are talking about in Java, right? These are typically, uh, when, we, uh, when we talk about leaks in uh, the managed code, these are not uh, your classic uh, uh, style leaks where basically objects are left out without any references to them because those are uh, easily garbage collected, right? Typically, what, uh, what we consider leaks in um, uh, managed code are objects that are not useful anymore, right? Their purpose is done, but because of some, uh, 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 what do you say, Re residual code or some code uh, holding on a reference, the garbage collector does not determine it to be garbage anymore, right? So these are the kinds of things that you consider leaks. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see some examples of why or how that may happen, right? And uh, we'll try to under, uh, go through and see uh, how to identify those through that. So uh, some of the typical problems, uh, especially with respect to Android programming, are uh, holding a context object. Context object is something that I mean you need for a lot of uh, 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 Android API calls. So uh, at least uh, I've seen uh, quite a few people passing around and holding uh, references to that and all, right? But <laughs> this context object typically uh, happens to be an activity and the activity will hold the reference to all the view objects and everything down below, right? So these typically tend to be quite big. <coughs> so if you keep holding and uh, what happens is, uh, uh, right, suppose the user rotates the screen, right? Then uh, basic, uh, the activity uh, is invalidated and a new activity will be created and all, right? So if you were holding on to references, these, these do not get uh, uh, garbage collected big, uh, if you have uh, uh, held the reference in a static variable and things like that. Other uh, thing is, uh, so one thing is non-static inner classes. So when you have an inner class which is uh, not, de not declared as static, it, uh, it needs to uh, have access to its uh, parent variables. So by default, it will have a reference to its parent object, right? So <laughs> as long as, uh, so what, uh, so as long as the uh, inner object is alive, the parent will be alive and vice versa. <coughs> uh, sorry. Um, or, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll see this also as an example uh, going for, uh, in the uh, coming, this thing, right? Other thing is uh, caching of uh, references. Uh, uh, again, one example is you would have an array or a uh, array lister uh, stack of objects and uh, you'd keep storing things into it 
and when you're done with it, you'd move a, po a pointer, right? In a, let's say you have a linked list or an array or a uh, uh, array list or something, right? When you're pushing, you write the reference into, you copy the reference into a, a particular index variable wherever you need, and whenever you're done, you basically move the pointer because that is enough, right? What happens uh, uh, when you're done with that is, uh, for a, the the actual collection or container object still has a reference to that. So for the garbage collector, it does uh, it does not deem it to be a uh, leak anymore. Uh, it does not deem it to be garbage, right? Other thing is uh, uh, again uh, similarly uh, at least uh, one thing people do is to uh, keep. Um, optimizing the, uh, to optimize uh, uh, optimize memory allocations uh, which are deemed costly people keep uh, storing when once they're done they they try to keep a collection of objects uh, i ran into this recently so I'm, i can relate to my experience as in i was allocating objects and i said okay i want to cache them so that i don't do memory allocations too much and i kept uh, pushing them into collections so even when uh, its use is over this collection will keep uh, growing and uh, it may actually run and become quite huge so now, uh, I mean, these are the uh, uh, problems we uh, like typically uh, that may cause memory issues, right? Now, uh, before we go and understand uh, um, uh, MAT and try to uh, look at it, first some basic definitions that are useful in, uh, in understanding this. Uh, first one is, a, uh, is called shallow size. Shallow size is basically the size of an object, right? Uh, let's say you have an int, right? It's basic, uh, It's a four byte. It's four bytes. Or if you have a reference, depending on uh, whether it's a 32 bit uh, VM or a 64 bit VM, it would be either four bytes or eight bytes, right? If you have an object that has, uh, uh, say, two or f uh, two ints, right? It would be four, uh, four, two, four, say eight plus the reference and this kind of thing. Uh, that will be uh, its shallow size. Uh, what is retain uh, retain size? Is basically the size of all the objects that are. <coughs> that are kept in uh, memory by uh, by this object that is uh, yeah, let me go uh, show you an example right we take a simple object graph here uh, the <coughs> there are basically all these arrows um, imply that uh, uh, somebody is holding a reference to them right so for, for the sake of uh, example i basically uh, we let's assume all the objects from a, a to f are uh, each of 100 size right so the if you uh, <coughs> so if you see uh, the the size indicated in black are is basically the shallow size of each object which is 100 for each of them and okay the colors are not showing up but the uh, number that is shown in the bottom is the uh, is called the retain is uh, basically the retained size of each object right so it, let's start from the uh, uh, leaves Right. This uh, for these three things, it's pretty uh, straightforward. The retained size of each object. It doesn't have any other references, so its uh, retained size is the same as its shallow size. Now, let, if you go to C, right, it it holds a reference to D. So D is in. I mean, assuming that there is no other refer uh, is, assuming that this is a subtree where there are no other uh, references to any of the objects from outside, the re uh, C D is in memory solely because of the reference from C. So. C's retained size includes D. So uh, the retained uh, size of C is now 200. Now, if we take E and F, right? <coughs> uh, e has a reference to F, right? Uh, but E's, uh, 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 what do I say? E's size is still, uh, E's uh, uh, retained size is uh, only shown as 100. It's not shown as 200. The reason is, F is not in memory just because of the reference from E. F is in memory because it has two references, both from A, B and E, right? So that is why E's uh, retained size is just shown as 100. B, because E and F are both controlled by B, I mean, both have references only from B. If B is gone, E and F both can become garbage. So B's, B's uh, uh, retained size is 300. And A um, is basically sum of all these, which is uh, 600, right? Uh, <coughs> now, uh, what is a dominator? Dominator is just what we have uh, covered, uh, which is basically, uh, in this case, w the object that is uh, holding, uh, the object that is causing this, uh, 
when we are talking about a particular object, let's say E here, what is the object that control? I mean, that is determining why B is uh, why E is not a garbage. In other, in a uh, in a more uh, uh, graph theory way, if all the references, if all the paths to a particular object from a garbage collector route are uh, passing through a particular uh, uh, object, then the that object is considered to be the dominator of uh, the child object. So in this case. F's dominator is uh, not E but B because all the paths to F will have to pass through B. Uh, <coughs> and GC routes are basically the uh, objects or uh, points from where garbage collection starts. These are things like uh, uh, native objects and your uh, 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 thread stacks because uh, whatever is being held there are, uh, are not garbage. So from there, uh, basically your garbage collector will start its mark and sweep algorithm to identify what is garbage and what is not. Right? So if we, uh, whatever I have just explained, if we just go back here, uh, this is basically the how the uh, dominated tree for, uh, uh, dominated tree for uh, uh, the previous object graph looks like. Okay. So now let's uh, quick, uh, go into an uh, example. Uh, <coughs> this demonstrates uh, the uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the things that I talked about a non-static inner class. Uh, so if you see, main activity is uh, I mean uh, regular activity, and it has a non-static uh, inner class called Lie class, right? And uh, what we are doing is it has a uh, it has a static reference to that particular Lie class, right? And we, I mean, uh, what is be, what is uh, being done here is just allocation of one. Uh, uh, I mean, allocation. Of, we are making sure that we are allocating only one Lie class object, right? Seems harmless. The whole thing, uh, everything seems fine here, right? But uh, actually, like <coughs> sorry. Let me just bring up uh, Eclipse. Mm. So th this is the code that is, and I'll uh, one second. Yeah. If I quickly run this. Mm. Just excuse me. Just a minute. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, first explain what what happens here. So the thing is, because there is a static um, a member called um, a static handle to this leak object uh, from the class object of uh, main activity, right? There will be a reference that will be uh, held to the leak uh, uh, leak class, and because this leak class is uh, 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 not a, uh, is not declared to be a static, uh, an, uh, static inner class. It will have a reference to the parent object of it uh, whenever it is c uh, created. So what happens is uh, ultimately this, uh, even if the main activity uh, is uh, replaced with a new activity because of uh, screen rotation or something, this act, uh, this object will keep holding on to the, uh, the the original activity, the old activity, the first activity. Um, on creation of which this leak is uh, I initialized will always be in the in memory right uh, let me i wanted to demo that just uh, by running it did it in here. I should have brought this up before. Okay. While this goes on, uh, what we can do, uh, I'll just uh, uh, quickly go to the uh, demo of 
uh, he, uh, he will we'll proceed and we'll come back to the how to create uh, uh, the heap dump so that we can examine it, right? So, uh, uh, what is MAT, uh, which is basically the topic of discussion we have come to there now, it's, uh, is basically it's a tool to examine heap dumps, right? Uh, heap dump is nothing but an image or uh, the uh, map of all the uh, all the uh, all the objects that are in uh, the heap in at any point of time, right? So, it, sh it has uh, basically every uh, details of all the objects that are present and all the references, etc. So, that uh, lets you examine uh, very uh, deeply uh, how things are, uh, I mean, how things are in the memory at any point, right? How do you generate a heap dump? Uh, there are multiple ways. Uh, first one is uh, through DDMS. Uh, let me see. Okay, this is up. So in uh, DDMS view, mm, wow. right? There is this button, uh, small one uh, here, if you can see, which if you uh, use, it can it can uh, create a hprof file. The other option is if you if you know at a particular point in your code you are running out of memory or you are getting an error uh, at some point, right? If you want to create a uh, heap dump at a, at a precise point, what you uh, can do is use this uh, uh, OS call android.os.debug.dumphprof uh, data. You have to supply it a file name. Uh, make sure that the file... Okay, sorry. <laughs> we haven't even gone into the demo. Okay. Make sure that the file is world writable so that uh, it can dump. Other is you can send a signal, but that will work only in an emulator. So, uh, as we are running out of time, let me quickly go to the go to some uh, demos of uh, Matt, right? So, with Matt, you can uh, sorry, you can do uh, uh, basically a lot of uh, uh, you can examine every uh, details. Let me just quickly uh, bring it up. Sorry, mm, sorry, where is the help is Matt? Okay, this is uh, the one we earlier tried uh, the demo, uh, the ma the report of that. Okay, the most important uh, things are dominator tree, which uh, we have discussed. So it shows that uh, uh, <coughs> it it uh, it can show the various objects and it's uh, their shallow and retained heap. So whenever you want to, uh, whenever you are running out of memory and you t are, uh, whenever you want to find leaks, this is one of the important places where you would look. You would sort by retained heap and you can uh, uh, see how the, uh, how the things are, uh, or which, are, which are the objects are uh, holding on to the maximum memory, right? The another view that is useful is uh, histogram view, where it shows uh, typically by, uh, started by the size of uh, various objects and it shows uh, again you can uh, sort them by the shallow i mean size of their shallow heap retained heap it can also show you the number of instances of various objects that are present right and uh, say for instance you and the one of the other uh, useful things is you can run a regular expression here so if you type um, main activity it will show all the instance i mean it will show all the classes that are matching great <coughs> that was uh, that error was from uh, my earlier uh, dump I, where I tried to dump I this assume so you can see uh, list of all objects uh, with incoming references here uh, this is an earlier dump that I, I'm just using to demonstrate the issue so there are three uh, main activity objects I've done it uh, like with uh, rot uh, rotation of twice or thrice and uh, so if we, so how do we determine whether it is uh, appropriate or not Right. So what you need to, uh, what you would want to look at is path to GC roots, right? Uh, excluding weak references. Okay. Great. <sighs> so I have not. Let me see if something else works.
so i am getting some issue with the, the earlier heap dump but uh, basically if you uh, if you look at any of the objects any particular object to determine whether there is a le whether what what is keeping it in memory this is what this is the view you would want to look at right you would want to see something called path to gc roots excluding weak references okay so <laughs> that will show you what are the th uh, uh, objects that are holding it, I mean how this object is determined uh, to be not garbage. What are the objects that are uh, from the GC root which are the, what is the path of uh, reference to this uh, particular object, right. So that will tell you I mean when ex um, if we uh, if, uh, if we had gotten the earlier thing working it would have shown that there is a handle from that leak object to the uh, main activity class one of the instances of the main activity class. So that that is uh, one of the one useful uh, this thing and another uh, thing just to uh, show is uh, I mean uh, I'm really running out of time uh, I didn't I should have planned the session better but there are a lot of useful features that you can uh, keep uh, uh, discovering uh, one other thing is a, uh, it is a very much type aware you can find a lot of things about your uh, you can do uh, uh, examine the contents of collections even if they are not just uh, typical uh, regular arrays uh, by uh, looking at the uh, and uh, you can even do uh, where is the <coughs> so just show. so you can do something called group by value uh, i'm just trying to uh, give you some of the tips some of the things so uh, it will be if there are multiple objects right if there are like hundreds of uh, integers int uh, integer objects then it will show basically uh, group them by uh, the value of their uh, this uh, value of the uh, object so for instance in case of a uh, uh, string uh, if there are a lot of string objects let me just try it quickly right i mean in this particular heap there are about 10000 uh, string objects right and i i basically say okay show group by value and it should show me here i mean it shows that there are uh, 9999 strings which are just uh, all of the all point all have the same value hello right i mean these are some of the tips that you can use to identify what is taking up in your mem uh, what is taking up memory in your uh, uh, program right you would look at number of details uh, i mean number of instances of various objects and try to look at uh, try to identify uh, if there are duplicates uh, if there are uh, maybe you are creating uh, instead of copying references maybe you are duplicating objects for instance those uh, kind of things and one of the most powerful thing uh, 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 one of the mo another mo most useful thing is uh, something called object query language right it's a uh, something it gives you a some uh, basic query language that you can run on the heap so uh, <coughs> so for instance you can say something like select star from uh, java dot lang dot string str where uh, str dot to string equals to hello and it will show uh, and you execute the string ok maybe what am I doing sorry or maybe I should just run it so uh, well uh, I am doing something wrong uh, yeah. anyway you can you can run basically expressions on the uh, on each of these objects and uh, map it and identify the everything that uh, matches that particular uh, uh, query and it will show all the instances of the particular object uh, of the particular class which match that okay so yeah that's basically a, uh, a very brief overview of uh, mat hope uh, you can at least uh, open it i've uh, help you to open it next time and uh, look at it although I haven't gone in detail about much uh, many of the features that I wanted to okay. that's done
are you going to upload this PPT somewhere so that we can actually sure sure I will I will do that yeah thank you uh, hi this is Prakya sure so prior to honeycomb motion so basically when we create any bitmap mm -hmm. the memory will be allocated in the native instead yes. of uh, Java right. heat. So, is it possible to find out any leaks in the any object uh, or anything bitmap stored in the native mm, memory? Not Using as far as I know. The, that the so yeah prior to uh, prior to Honeycomb yeah you all your bitmaps will be in native memory, and those are not uh, visible to the heap dump. Uh, so, is there any way to find out the any memory loss or leak which is happening in the native level? Uh, so what we write in the NDK code or CSV++? Yeah, mm, I'm not aware of it. Okay. Satun, do you have any? Sorry. Excuse me. Yeah, sorry. So I have two questions. Uh, sure. One is uh, the example you, that you gave. Huh. The sorry. Yeah, the example that you gave for the leak class. Uh, leak class was holding reference to the activity. Uh, yes. Le the the object, sorry. The leak object. The leak, created, leak yeah. object was holding a reference to the activity. Right. But the moment uh, on create would be called again. Yeah. Uh, the leak object itself would be dereferenced from the activity. Yeah, the, the, re, the re, I mean the reason it is there is because it is there is a static reference to that leak in the class. Um, Agreed, but that's since it's static, uh, there'll be only one instance of that. Yes, there will be only one instance. And the moment it gets dereferenced, and a new leak, leak activity, of course, is created. So, so there are two leak activities, one activity. But the second leak activity is actually dereferenced. Okay. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, I the, the code does not. I mean, in the code, we are not. We are never creating a second leak activity. The yeah. first leak activity ever created hmm. is being held in the static uh, uh, member, yes. right? And that static member will always be holding reference to the activity which was part of. It was. It was part of. Right. Right. And right. from the second time onwards. Right, there is no other leak activity being created, leak object being created. Okay. Okay. So now uh, the original leak object that was created, the first one, mm -hmm. is held be, uh, held from the class because it is a static uh, uh, yes. member. Yes. Right. So the first activity that was ever used, mm -hmm. that was ever created, will mm -hmm. never go out of uh, uh, scope or it will always have reference. Uh, I can just. Uh, uh, so basically, what I'm you. trying to understand here is that uh, yeah. if 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 an activity has a reference to an object and the object in turn has a reference to the activity yeah. will both the objects remain in memory so so the the mistake here is that the the class that uh, the inner class huh. is not uh, declared as static the reference to it is static yeah. but the class is not static right so so what i mean so that is why it has a reference to its parent if the class was declared to be static right, it right. would not yeah, have yeah, had that, that reference I'm, what i'm asking is uh, hmm. If there is a cyclic, uh, you know, reference, will both the objects remain in the memory? So as long no, as long as it is not a static, there is no static reference. It would not. Right. Uh, the second question is uh, images. So I read somewhere that images are handled very differently in Android. Mm -hmm. uh, they are actually uh, the memory w while rendering the memory is actually created in native and then. So yeah, th that is what uh, uh, earlier person also asked. Oh, so before, sorry, bef <laughs> yeah, th basically before Honeycomb, uh -huh. the bitmap objects used to be st uh, stored in native memory, right? Okay. So they were they would not be visible to your heap dump or uh, you ca you will not be able to examine them through MAT. Right. Whereas after Honeycomb versions, these objects also are allocated on the uh, uh, heap as a byte arrays, so you would be able to examine them. Okay. The question is actually. Uh, mm -hmm. When I dereference the images, mm -hmm. will the uh, the objects be gar garbage yeah, collected? Uh, so we we don't have to do anything sure. extra to okay. actually garbage collected. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. We